thank you for tuning in to another edition of the St. James Project. And I am your beautiful brown skin, hashtag live, learn, and grow host, Imani St. James. Hey. Now, on today's show, I have Mr. Shea Butter himself. And you know Shea Butter is good for the skin. Mr. Cody J. Woods. All right, let's get into the interview with Cody J. Woods. Here with Cody Woods. Yep. How are you doing? Hey, hi, Cody. <laughs> I had a question so, mark on it. <laughs> Cody Woods? No. Cody who? Oh, my God. So if you don't know who Cody Woods is, um, God, I don't know how to describe him. My first time seeing him was when I went to Tommy T's. And after, you know, I mean, I, I was kind of like, oh, okay, you know, bring on the other guests. And then I was like, okay, who's this dude? And I'm like, all right, so something is not making sense here. Right. I think you understand what Wakanda forever means. Kind of forever? What would you say? Wakanda forever. Oh, yeah, but you know what? Yeah. I haven't seen the movie yet, so I might be missing some nuance. So. Yeah, but when I say Wakanda forever, I mean, I saw, like... And you're a comedian, so I don't think you get, like, personally offended. Mm -mm. I saw, like, okay, okay, this is a brother. (laughs) (laughs) That's what I'm thinking. I get that. And you have to. I know you get it all the time. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, I see life experience, and I'm like, oh, my God, this dude is, you you had a whole table cracking up. I'm happy. That's one of the best compliments, especially uh, just a little secret. When uh, white comics make black crowds laugh, Mm -hmm. they feel really good. (laughs) They feel uh, extra. Well, we feel like we identify with you. But yeah, um, but yeah, I I like uh, just being able to identify with an audience, um, and it just so happens that I identify a little bit better when I'm in that environment with with people of color. Yep. Just okay. So that leads me into my first question then, because I did do some research on you. I was like, oh, this is really cool. So, growing up as a kid, was it a? Uh, it seems like that's where the talent was developed. Yeah, yeah. Because well, I had the funny gene because there's a couple of funny people in my family. You okay. need that, but you also need a little bit of pain, a little bit of resistance. So, um, what kind of correlates into what you're saying is. I was the only white kid at the school. Like, not a lot of white dudes grow up being the only something of something. <laughs> right. right. So that completely flips your perspective. Um, and then, so yeah, dealing with that, and then having to get approval from everybody. That's basically what being a stand-up comedian is. Like, you're going up there against all odds. Okay. To make people laugh, they expect you. They're just waiting. Uh huh. And I have to win their approval. So I'm going against the grain in a way to get people's approval. So. Yeah, because we can be rough. We're yeah. rough on our own, so we're probably a little bit rougher on yeah. outsiders. Yeah. And then in comedy crowds, in, just in general, are rough too. On top of that, because Ex- exactly they have an expectation of you, and you have to fulfill it. So, right, but your, your style is so is funny as hell, but it's laid back. Yeah. I mean, it's like. Okay, is he smoking weed? But he, you know, he's funny. But he, you know, he's, he's really laid back. He's not. Yeah. Some comics are, some comedians are just like loud and all over the place. Yeah, I that was a pride thing for me because I like being able to get the same amount of laughs as the high energy guy. Okay, just like laying on my ass, you know. Cause yeah, it's, it's funny to me because it's like a funny character to just be like killing, but he doesn't give a shit. Right, it, it, that's how your style. Was. Right. Uh, okay, so. Um, do you write your own material? Yeah. You do? Mm-hmm. I mean, is it just like sit down and write it or? Well, not so much anymore, but they, that's how it used to be. I used to love just sitting down and filling up a piece of paper. Just the smell of the ink. Just, I'm, I'm in love okay. with writing. But um, now, like, because my, like, my career has kind of taken a gear to where you need full focus on the business side. Right. I am writing all day, but am I going <laughs> to oh, yeah. cuss on this? I don't, I'm sorry if I'm cussing. No, 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 that, um, no you can't, because that's why I do my own stuff. Okay. Because, you know, stuff comes, if you have a comedic brain, it's going to come, but you just have to document it, and that's right. where the laziness comes in. So I didn't want any excuse to be lazy, so I was like, all right. And so do, when you write it down, so I'm just wondering, do you um, remember what you wrote? Do you remember what... From, is it from memory when you're on stage? Well, once I go on stage, it's no rules, no anything. So um, you just kind of ad lib. 
That I just start ad libbing. Like oh, okay. I try to plan to a T and then I never do. I never do what I planned. I try. But Yeah, because some of your stuff, oh my god, you know, I'm like that it well, I don't wanna cut you off, but it blew me away with the Gucci bag and E V T card. Oh right, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, I'm like, who the fuck? Right. So with that that's kind of my structure. Like, that was just a little puzzle piece. Because I had that, I noticed it on something, and then I was like, wow, that could that could connect to a piece of my story, you know? So I just took that piece, because, it, uh, and it's funny, right? And okay. that is, it's like Jenga. You just start, you know, putting all the funny pieces together in the right order, and then set up each piece just right. You're telling a story. You're right, books. yeah. So that's kind of how I do. I just I write down little puzzle pieces all day, okay, and then I'll try to puzzle it together later. Okay, but the, but know. some of that has to be because you've grown up around that. Yeah. You know, I mean, you right. know, Yeah. I'm like. Yeah. You can't really know about that and pull, know about and, that and pull it off unless you either experience it or seen it. Some, but you've been there. You've been in the in the environment. Right. Exactly. Okay, okay. You can't. Um, you know, people can smell it when you're faking it. Yeah, no, well, exactly. Yeah. That's when I'm like, oh my God, it's this guy's hilarious. If, if you illustrate everything through the details, people usually are like, hey, that's too, that's too fine of a detail. Yeah. To for this for this guy to be faking. not to know. Yeah, I'm yeah. like, I'm thinking, you know, this dude has grown up around black people <laughs> or poor people, but this yeah. dude has grown up in the inner city or something. Yeah, I did. Okay, so my next question is. How do you respond if, if the audience is not giving you great energy? I mean, you know, you're you're telling mm-hmm. your jokes and things like that, but you're not yeah. getting, you know, the accu- the approval of the audience. How do you deal with that? Well, here recently, I mean, just because you grow every year, I guess what I'm doing now is when they pull back, I already know why they're pulling back. Okay. Like, usually when you're younger as a comic and the audience pulls back, you don't really expect it. And then you're like, oh shit, what do I do? And then you... Then you start to learn how to develop a plan B. Okay. But after 11 years of doing this, I already know what they're going to do. Like, like it's like you're telepathic in a way. You already know why they're reacting this way. Because you just get to know people on a level when you're on stage. You get to know them really well. Well, you've been doing it for 11 years. Yeah. Yeah, yeah okay. It's not, it seems easy, but I've heard from a lot of people it's not as easy as it looks. See, the thing, and then the better the comedian, the easier it looks. You okay. I mean? Right. Well, yeah. I mean, so, you were literally just like chilling. <laughs> like, <right>. okay. <laughs> I've seen George Wallace forever, but I'm yeah. like, there's a big generation gap between the two. I'm like, he's just chilling. I'm like, yeah, okay. Yeah. Um, I guess one of the questions, one of the things I have with some comedians that you know I'm kind of turned off about is mm-hmm. because, you know, you you do put on a great show, and a lot of people, a lot of comedians put on a great show, but everybody is not going to like your material no. so have you ever encountered like a heckler absolutely um and, yeah and how do you deal with it well that's when i really start to have fun because i don't like following a plan okay like i said i plan to a t i try to execute it as soon as i'm up there uh, my moods and my thoughts right become organic and then as soon as someone interrupts then i get to be even more organic so i actually get excited that's that's when i'm having my best time I have countless heckler videos, but I'm afraid to upload them because then people might start coming to the show because they want to see that. They want to see me respond. Well, I'm just thinking. So. When, when, okay, so there there was an incident I saw with um, a certain comedian. I don't think I want to mention his name, but yeah. the lady didn't approve of this show, and I don't know if she gave the thumbs down or <laughs> stood up or something. Yeah. And I can understand him, you know, clapping back, but then he kind of crossed the line by calling her derogatory names and things like that. And I'm just kind of, you know, just asking, what would probably have been your response? Well, for me, anytime I get heckled, I think, oh good, this is a time for me to show off how fucking good I am. (laughs) Okay. I'll be honest, and I'm at a point now where I'm just honest and like, I already know I can deal with almost every situation on stage. Right. And I want the audience to know that. The only way they could possibly know that is if they interrupt me. Right, you know? so right. So I'm like, okay, cool, watch this. So that's kind of my response. Maybe he was in a bad place mentally. I don't know who it is, but it doesn't even matter. I know that if you allow um, certain emotions to consume you up there, it shows weakness. 
Uh, right. That's yeah. And I, I, you know, and I thought, you know, what I will never go see his concert in live because after yeah. I still feel like. Yes, he was giving a great show. Maybe she didn't like it, but you have to remember she is paying to see you, right. not to be called, you know, out of her name and, and ref- body yeah. parts and things like that. Yeah. I think they're both in the wrong, probably. Yeah. Well, yeah, you know, why not just get up and leave? That's, yeah. Yeah. If you didn't like it, just leave. Right. Don't ruin someone else's but, style. Exactly. I agree. Yeah, you know, yeah. So she is in the wrong, but, you know, also, like, there should be some pride taken as a comedian to make anything funny that could possibly happen. Okay. You know, like anything that could happen, you can make it funny. Like there should be a pride there. I mean, I, maybe I'm old school in that way, and I know it's weird for me to say the word old no, school. No, but, but, well, but so, there is some, so there's some relevance when you, you, you old school. I mean, yeah, it's kind of yeah. a blend, yeah. Because I think now people want to be a comedian to be famous. I want to do it to be the funniest dude ever. That's all I wanted to be, it was just the funniest dude. Right. And... I don't know if that um, sense of pride is still there. So, you know, I if something happens, I have a my ego for some <laughs> some reason. No, that's everybody. You know, some reason I'm driven by this. Uh, what is it? The id, the whatever it is. Um, I'm driven to try to prove myself, especially when a disaster happens, like drink falls, all that. I just, uh, I mean, I just got heckled the other week. Um, I was at a casino in Oregon, middle of Oregon, on a Federal Reserve. Okay. Um, and it was a reserve for Native Americans. Mm-hmm. Now, because they own the, the joint, mm-hmm. they're assholes, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And then... Um, oh, are they? They're, they're being assholes. Because, and they told me ahead of time. They're like, hey, look, you know, um, this is sort of just their spot. They're going to yell. They're going to drink. Right. You know, it's just... They own... The, this is... You're in their living room. Right, right, right. So I was like, all right, cool. And then, they're, and then they say, just whatever you do, just don't go at them. Don't make any jokes about Native Americans. And I'm like, yeah, yeah, sure. But that's the first thing I do when I go up there. <laughs> and it works. It worked great. Um, sometimes people are just subconsciously, they want to test you. So they'll yell something out just to see if you're good, if you're on your toes. And that's exactly what they did. One lady started howling like a wolf. Like mm-hmm. just crazy stuff. You know, okay. so I was like, all right, well, I'm ready for the confrontation. I, I like it. <laughs> But do you think at times, because I've grown up under the old school, like the old comedians that, you know, if you were handicapped, they talked about you. Yeah. If you, if you were on Section 8, they talked about you. If you were white, they talked about yeah. you. So I'm kind of thinking today's society, because of all that's going on, people are too sensitive. I'm glad you're saying that. And they kind of limit you in your, 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 they take away your ability to be funny because they looking for people to be politically correct. And that's, that's yeah. not funny. Right. They're trying to box in the comedian. Right. Um, when the comedian's the most harmless of all the, you know, all the threats. So let's say a comedian's making a joke towards a group of people. That group of people's resistance in real life is way more important than what a comedian joked about. Yeah, I don't understand but why Why can't, I mean. It's because the comedian's the easy target. Well, because you know, the, the I haven't seen her on the, the scene for a while. Lisa Lampanelli. Uh-huh. Notorious about talking about right. having sex with black guys, yeah. giving blowjobs, yeah. Asians. Right. She talks about being on Section Eight. Yeah. And you know, I and mean, a lot of people really didn't complain. But then I haven't seen her on the scene in a while. And some shows I go to now, it's like it almost makes me, the individual, not want to go see a show because I want to see the person be in their space and say whatever the hell they want. Yeah. And if I don't like it. I don't have to stay there. Right. I, I think, uh, yeah, we're still overly sensitive. But let's say she makes a joke about... Sorry, I'm moving my hands so much. Yeah. Um, she makes a joke about certain people that's just overtly racist, but funny. It's like a, So she says a joke that's overtly offensive towards a group. Like, it's actually it's a racist a joke. But it's a it's funny joke. A racist and, joke. But it's a funny joke, and it's clever. Right. Um, people have a right to be offended, though. In a way. Well, yeah, well, but, okay, they do. They have a right to be offended, but here's the thing. If I do a joke that is involving some people and no and it's not necessarily offending them, but mm-hmm. it is involving them and it's it's just offensive in nature, but I'm not taking a shot at them. In today's PC world, they will try to construe it as a racist joke or a prejudice joke or a sexist joke. They I know, but yeah. you gotta. I, I I'm just so you know, and I'm 
you know, yeah. I'm glad we're having this discussion. I'm just so, I'm just taken back that you have to know your what you're going to get when you go to a show, you know, especially like you, you I don't have a problem with you talking about black people with EBT cards. I mean, it's a fact. It's a right. fact to a, a certain degree, but... Right, just as long as you emphasize the degree. You know? Right. Like, if you try to paint it, you know, black and white, then it that's where it becomes a problem. But, you know, I make it very clear. I'm talking about ratchets, man. I'm not it, even talking right, about... Right, and you have ratchets in all colors. Yeah. Right, right. But here's the thing. There's a big difference between me and Lisa Lampanelli. Like, Lampanelli will do a full-on racist joke, right? Exactly. And I will do a joke involving race that's offensive. But it's not racist, though. Because a right. racist joke would be like, oh, all black women are like that, right? Right. So, um, what today's PC culture will then do is to go ahead and bump me to the Lisa Lampanelli category. They'll, and that's not they'll fair bump to me you, in, right. unfairly bump me, me in, right. even though I'm actually fine tuning this shit. I'm right. Not just, I'm not just swinging blindly. I'm doing very accurate detail. Like I'm taking very good care of the targets that I'm hitting. Okay. Right. But because. Uh, power is in being a victim nowadays. Right. Yeah. People will me too. Misconstrue yeah. every, they'll misconstrue whatever they can. But I'm okay with that. As long as you show that it doesn't bother you that they're power tripping, mm -hmm. then they're like, oh shit, well, what do I do? Well, you are definitely funny. You have a laid back style, which I think is just like, wow. And then, you know, I want to just say that I'm just going to take a guess that you're really young. 29. Yes, so I see I was right. So I mean, but I see a lot of experience. So at 29, um, and you know, you've been connected to a lot of uh, big name comedians like Eddie Griffin and things like mm -hmm. that. Uh, I even thought I saw Lunell on there on your bio. Yeah. Um, so what what is next for you? I don't know. That's the thing. That's the painful part of this business. You don't know what's next. So I mean, it's really like walking blindfolded. Do you have any, any plans on, you know, being on the big screen anytime soon? I do, yeah. So I'm just trying to manufacture my time to where I can focus on that and acting and stuff. I have acting experience, but I've never really, um, I've always been 90% stand-up. So okay. right now what I'm trying to learn how to do is do 50-50. 50-50? It's really hard for me. So I assume that, you know, you're making, now, it just seems like things is set that you're really making a living, living with this now. Yeah, making a living, living, but it's a hustle. I mean, it's not a comfy. Right, 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 right. So, like, I'm, uh, I mean, and there is a level where it gets comfy, too. Mm -hmm. but like, I'm not there yet. So, I have to, I have to figure out what I have to do to make that comfy to where it's consistent. Right? Okay. Um, and I, that's probably going to come from doing some screen, some on screen. Right, so, I, I'm, I'm looking to see you there. I, yeah. I'm sure you'll get there. So, <laughs> where, where do you see yourself maybe, like, in five years? Um, that's always been tough for me to say. Um, I, I, I mean, it's okay if you, you I don't pray have to God uh -huh. that I have at least some sort of stand-up special on a major network. I mean, if I don't have that in five years, I don't know what the hell. I mean, it's going to hurt if I don't have that. Like, I'm already dreading uh, not having that shit right now. And not even being close. Okay. So I'm like, God dang. And then I see who makes it. Right. And I'm just like, I, I know that guy, and I've been doing this longer, and he's half the comic, but because he pandered in a certain way, he just climbed the ranks more. So if I take five more years of just seeing that, mm -hmm. I don't know what I'm going to do. I might figure something else out. Okay. Come a nurse or something. <laughs> I, I probably... I, well, <laughs> I'm, I'm sure. I mean, you can always start your own thing. You have enough of an audience. Yeah, I think I'm going to start maybe. At yeah, least yeah. in five years, I will have an online presence. Yeah. That's for sure. yeah, yeah, I mean, you have enough uh, uh, just, you know, following you on Facebook. Mm -hmm. You know, he is on Facebook. Are you on Twitter also? I don't do Twitter, but I do Instagram. Okay, so uh, Cody Woods is on Facebook and Instagram. Instagram. Mm -hmm. Is it just hashtag Cody Woods? It's uh, Cody J. Woods. Cody J. Woods. So just the letter. Cody J. Woods. Okay. And then you have a website, www.codywoods.com. Cody J. Woods. I don't even need Woods. to use the W. I mean, yeah. that's so old. You know, just know. <laughs> codywoods.com. Okay. But it's Cody J. Woods. Cody J. Woods. Okay. Mm -hmm. I just... I
Because I, what I tried doing was like, you know how you have an Instagram handle, Twitter what handle. Where did you grow up? Mm -hmm. I grew up in Wichita, Ooh, Kansas. All these Wichita, Kansas. Yeah. That's so, that way. That's the Midwest, right? That's middle, middle, middle. Okay, because I mean, I was, I had some people stationed in my platoon that was, yeah, okay. uh, from Kansas, and they just, I mean, I, I you know, I'm not, I'm not, you know, making it, but I'm just saying that. That was my experience. Uh, the people that were stationed in my platoon from Kansas, they just. They were just like, well, I've never grown up, you know, I've never seen a black person. They just, right. ha okay, and so they had issues with trying yeah. to deal with okay. living next to a black person. Yeah, <laughs> and it's really that elementary. Is it? People. It really is, because I remember I, the, the part of town I was staying on, okay. we had some in-laws in town, and then we drove up to a, we drove up to a gas station. Mm -hmm. So yeah, there's a lot of, a lot of black people in, in this part of town. And they all start coming out, like five <laughs> black people. And then she in the back is freaking out, like, oh my God, I've never seen that many before. I mean, seriously, she that's what that. yeah, the girl, one of the girls in our platoon was from. It was somewhere in the Midwest, and she, we had yeah. meetings. She just, you know, and she just did not know how to deal with it. And I'm just thinking, this is foreign to me. Yeah. You know? Yeah. You either get culture shocked or you live in a bubble the rest of your life. And I, I'm really glad I got culture shocked most of my life. Because going from, you know, very white school and then mm -hmm. being forced to go on the other side of town, um, which I think was a part of some sort of federal initiative. I think it's been around since the 60s. I was trying to figure out why okay. so many white people come up to me after shows and they're like, I relate. Like, they're relating with my, sh my mm -hmm. show too. And I was like, well, why does that happen so much? Uh, well, I guess it's because... Um, the government wanted people to just start intermingling. Right. So let's start it in schools. So we'll take some inner city kids, ship them out to the suburb, the other way around, and then boom, boom, boom. And um, so I grew up in that environment all, okay. just all of a sudden. And then after that, I went to the Bay Area and finished high school there amongst like Silicon Valley's richest kids. Okay. So like I got to see, see. like a good part of America. Maybe not all of it, but. Okay. You know, so okay, I, and so I guess just a few more questions. Do you have any siblings, sisters, brothers? I got two brothers. I don't know. I don't. I got an older brother. Don't know him. Mm -hmm. uh, younger brother. I knew him for a little in my childhood. So he's like a grown man. I don't. I don't know you, any you of those really guys. You really don't connect you guys at all. No. Okay. Um, they could have any last name. I don't. <laughs> yeah. And plus, on top of that. Oh my, so you, yeah. you usually make a joke. It so it seems like you, out of your trials, you make jokes about it, okay? Yeah. <laughs> no, I don't, that's, I don't that's know those guys. I hear it all the time. And plus, I'm not going to reach out because I don't know where they're at in life. Oh my gosh, you this know? made me lose I, much. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so, um, and you're, you're li are you living in the Bay Area now? No, I live in Los Angeles. I've been oh. there for four years. Okay, my, my right. that was my second home until I went to Hawaii. Yeah. Ooh, what so, island? What island? I went to Oahu, and okay. you know what? I am seriously considering moving. I, I want to go. I'm going to Maui later this year, and I want to seriously consider moving to Hawaii. I just, yeah. Buena Park was my first choice, but okay. now yeah. I went to Hawaii and just fell in love with it. So That's amazing. Yeah, I just don't know. So, okay, so you're a single young man. You live from Los Angeles. Are you, you know, I always have to ask, that's my job as the yeah. host. Are you dating? Are you in a relationship? Um, I'm in a, a turnover style <laughs> of, <laughs> I'm dating. Okay, I don't know what that means, please. It's a high turnover position. <laughs> I'm sorry. No, I mean, <laughs> you guys heard it here. Look, I, that's I mean, why I have to talk to people because I need yeah. to stay it's up just, on stuff. So is it, what is that, is that complicated? What does that mean? Well, what it means is like, it, I can't stay with someone very long. You know, because, oh, okay. Yeah, so high, high, high turnover. High turnover job. Oh, yeah. Okay, so you're there today. Really? Is that? Yeah. Why? Because of the the, the artist in you? you mm -hmm. just, yeah, it's like. Um, so you can't commit? Well, it's just. Well, you're only 29, so I. I I'm can't like, commit, and it's not because of an effort thing, because mm -hmm. like 29 is. It's not 21 anymore. It's right. 29. But, so yeah. I'm kind of. I get the dad instincts and get married instincts coming in but I can't do it yet because of time allocation it's like literally you can't I mean, like, I mean yeah. and then you, you know to be honest with you you're just not ready because if you were you you would do it so it, that's yeah. just not the person for you right and I, I don't think it's you know that I don't want a relationship it's just you know I want to be at a certain income certain schedule certain 
I don't want to be hustling all the time. Well, that's you know? usually the the that's usually cross the line with most men. They usually worry about those things. That's that that's barriers to them for why right. they don't you know are not ready to oh. commit or. We yeah. would, we would just be bums. Some of us are, but uh, I don't. I already know how happy women are when the husband's broke, <laughs> <laughs> which is not very happy. <laughs> well, you know what? You, I'm glad you didn't cap on me because I was concerned about that. I'm just like, God, let's keep hope alive. <laughs> <That's> like, <laughs> some of us got to climb the mountain first, but some of us just never climb the mountain though. Too, uh-huh. that's another thing. We're like, once I get to the top. I'm getting my queen. It's gonna be all good. Uh, but some of us just fucking, we die on Everest. Just we have never you, get to the top. Have you ever made it considered doing your own reality show? You know, just mm. is that? I mean, just oh, I mean, if if the opportunity comes and nothing mm-hmm. else comes, I mean, yeah, you're kinda... funny as shit. I mean, it's like you're you're super funny, but your style is laid back. Right. Um, you know, when I saw you, I'm, I'm kind of thinking, that's like G-E-Z, like, you know? <laughs> I, I mean, if it comes. And then you pull up, walking with your, your you know, your traveler's bag, you know? Yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm standing out there looking for a limo. I'm serious. Yeah. <laughs> and I'm just like, okay. You know, and, you know, but you have some comedians that they get just a little bit of fame. They pull it up in the Aston Martin, and next week you hear they broke and they're doing a show, a rap reality yeah. show, and they car because. <laughs> well, I I don't think I'm ever gonna be funny coming from walking out of an Aston Martin. Some guys <laughs> can do that, where they're that they they're still loved. Right. But I can't pull up in an Aston no, Martin. Just, like, hey I y'all, know. look at your money. <laughs> look at all your money right here. Man, your money's really fast. It's got eight cylinders. Yeah, I mean, I just like your your style. So I'm just hoping, you know, people would just go, um, you know, that, this good. Well, you know, I would want to say that he's at the improv tonight, but I will look up your schedule and mm. I can put it out more because by the time I put this interview out, it'll be... It'll be too late. Yeah, oh, right. to come and see mm-hmm. you tonight. I should have just, you know, probably just did it live while I was on, but I didn't think about that. Oh, I, was, I kind of like to do a control thing. Honestly, thank you for you know the opportunity, cause I was scared. I'm like, oh god, he might, you know, text me back and say fuck no or something like oh, that. No. I'm just, I'm just like, <laughs> I just did a terrible uh, public access interview in Connecticut, mm-hmm. which it's on the internet. I need to delete it somehow. <laughs> it's not on. I didn't post it, um, and this lady just could not fill the time. It was ten minute segments. And so that she she'd run out of stuff, and then I would just over embellish a story, just trying to. Are you, you serious? Know. Yeah. So. Yeah, she ended up by the third segment in between breaks, and so we got two breaks because there's one segment break, mm-hmm. another segment break, and so the third segment going in, she's telling me, "All right, so uh, you know, I was asking you, who would you open mic for? Like, what is that?" I tried answering it. I said, yeah, you do open mics as a comedian when you first start. She's like, no, but who would you open mic for? I'm like, do you mean open for? Yeah. Like, yeah. <laughs> so I was like, all right, we'll tell you what, since we're having a hard time filling time, okay. I'll answer that question as well. So just throw it out. <laughs> right? Okay. And Not then, enough. so she goes up and then she's like, so who would you open mic for? I'm like, okay, so I think what you mean by that is open for, right? And then it'd be, yeah, I'd love to open for Kevin Hart, blah, 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 answer the question. And then, um, during that same break, also on top of that open mic, like confusion, like she didn't know what it meant. Um, she said, "Why don't you at the end, you know, just do a little stand up for the camera?" And I was like, "No, definitely <laughs> oh, wow. not." Because first of all, so, I've been doing jokes at her, but she's been thinking about her script the whole time. Like right. she's not engaged like you are. Right. And so I was like, I've been doing bits, you know, the whole time, but and it doesn't not... work in the camera. I'm doing them to you. And then the audience watches that. That's how it works. Right. Especially my style. I'm not a performer. <laughs> right? No, I want you in your and, space. Yeah. But then she says, okay, all right, so no, none of that. And then seven minutes in, she's running out of stuff. So uh, why don't you just go and do a little something, something. All right, I guess I'll, uh, what, you want me to strip? Like, what is it? All right. <laughs> Made a little joke. Oh, you just clowning her gave all her, over the place. <laughs> Gave her some time to think <laughs> uh-huh. by throwing out a joke. But then she's like, but no, really, just go on and do a little something, something. I'm like, no. And this is live. or on TV. I'm like, no, I'm not doing that. I told you I'm not doing that. 
<laughs> well, you know, okay, so in all fairness, maybe because uh, I'm an older college student. I'm in yeah. my 50s, so I... She was older than you. Oh, really? Yeah, well, she, maybe there's a disconnect. I don't there know. Just a I'm just trying to just play devil's advocate, you know, but when I ask somebody to do an interview, I'll, when you know, when they get back, before they get back to me, I'm already looking them up and see well, yeah. what do they do, where they're from, the history on them, and so... I already saw your show, and um, didn't George Wallace comment on you or something? Make a comment about you? Didn't Probably. I, I walked out during his set. <laughs> <laughs> Probably though. They already. Cause you know he's so old school. Yeah. Oh my god. And I'm just like, oh wow, well, if I could just get these yeah. two together, yeah. So. Yeah. Yeah, I, I wrote your name down. That's why I came over to you, say hello, and I'm like, okay, let me find it. And I was gonna, you know, text yeah. Terrell, but. But it just so happened you got back to me, you were open, so yeah. The research really helps too, because she had no research, this lady. I looked at her notes, I was like, oh boy, this is going to be a lot of work on my end. <laughs> to yeah, and I don't time. want you to do that. Yeah, yeah no, so I want to ask you the questions. I want you to engage. I, the only thing I'm just thankful you're, for, you know, you guys, he didn't cap on me. I didn't know if he was going to, uh -huh. you know, like, talk about my wig or something. <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> Yeah. I wonder what show you saw at the Wallace Weekend because there was a, well there was like I did like six of them with him. Well, this was yeah. this was fun. I look forward to seeing you. I'm gonna see you tonight, but yeah. I look forward to seeing you when you come back in town again. You know, when you have the little parties, please don't forget about me. Absolutely. So I can come by and just say, you know, hey. But you know, I'm just. What? Are, who are some of your like favorite comedians? Well, right now I'm watching a couple of people I've just never been exposed to. Mm -hmm. um, there's a guy out of London named Stuart Lee who's just okay. so dope. Like, oh my god, like he's reinventing stand-up in a way, like just a different style. Okay. Um, you know, I really enjoy. Um, I mean, Corey Holcomb makes me laugh. I mean, who, who's another? There's a lot that I love, um, but if there's ones that are like reinventing stand up in a mm -hmm. way then I'm really liking them because I've seen everything. I mean so <laughs> you mentioned Kevin Hart earlier so that mm -hmm. the, I really I'm gonna wrap it up because I know you yeah. gotta get ready. Um, okay. Would you like to really do an open for Kevin Hart? I would because I think he would like what I do. I think he understands comedy really mm -hmm. well like he is a black belt in comedy all types even mm -hmm. the types that he isn't necessarily good at he'll know what's good you know he's okay. good at what he does which is excellent but there's other styles and I think he would be like wow I see what you're doing there like, okay you'll see like what I'm doing is actually harder than normal okay, right? okay. so I want him to see that and I feel like he would all of a sudden hook me up <laughs> okay well, I mean I'll check I've seen him a couple some stuff he did I just didn't think I don't know I wasn't really yeah, I think he's overstretching. Yeah, that's that's the word. Yeah, I think. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Okay. Well, this has been nice, and I'm looking forward to seeing you again in the future. And I will put some plugs in for you. You know, don't forget everyone, Cody yep. Woods, Cody J Woods. Yeah. CodyJWoods.com. He's going to be appearing somewhere soon near you. Thank you Thank for you. you know being part of the St. James Project. And um, let's break that soon. Yes, absolutely. <laughs> Thank you so okay. much. Okay, all right. Oh my God, you're so hilarious.